everyone, I'm Susan Mulvihill. You know, it's been a few weeks since I gave you an update on how our pollinator garden is doing, and it's doing great. So that is the perfect topic for this week's video. As a quick recap, we created this bed in May. We had been thinking about it for years, finally got around to it, and the first thing we did is we took some really long garden hoses and kind of mapped out the edge with some nice curves. Then we went upstairs in our house to see if that looked okay, tweaked it a little bit, and then decided, okay, those are the boundaries of the bed. Then we tore out a whole bunch of sod, and oh, that's a horrible job, but any time I can reduce the footprint of my lawn, I'm a happy camper. After that, we had some soil brought in because we really needed some extra, and we added in some amendments, and then I started buying plants and adding things in, and that was really exciting. Now, I know this bed is long, and it's really hard to get the big picture, so let me show you an overhead view, and then you can see how it's laid out. You'll notice I've got a lot of Gloriosa daisies and black-eyed Susans, and all of them came from our main front perennial bed. And I have to tell you, they transplant so easily, and it was a great way to get new plants without having to spend any money. There are a couple other types of plants that didn't cost me a cent that I planted here and there in the pollinator bed. The first is that blue perennial lobelia you see on the left, and they transplanted so easily from the main bed. And the other was canna lilies that I had overwintered from last year. What you're looking at here are some of my milkweed plants. On the left with the pink flowers is a swamp milkweed called Cinderella, and on the right is whorled milkweed. And both of them are doing really great. These are an unusual type of bee balm called spotted bee balm. It is a native plant and it's growing really, really well. So look at those weird flower heads. The bees think they're great and I think they're so cool looking. This plant in the foreground with the flower spikes is giant purple hyssop. I saw some of it last year in a Chicago garden and it was absolutely covered with monarch butterflies. We don't see a lot of monarchs here, sadly, but I am hoping someday they will find those. This is a native plant. I thought it would be fun to take you on a little tour of the pollinator bed, slowly but surely. So I hope you'll enjoy what you see.
hope you enjoyed this little tour of our pollinator garden. I have to be honest with you, I had no idea everything would do so well. Now we have been watering the bed quite a bit and that's because even though we have drought tolerant plants in here, it's so important to water them for the first two years while they're becoming established. We will start cutting back on the water as we're going into fall, however. Now one thing I plan to do is to let most everything go to seed and that's because I want a thicket of plants for pollinators in here. But another thing I want to do, and I do this with all of my flower beds, is I want to leave seed heads for birds to nibble on during the winter months because those seeds are an important nutrition source for them. Now if you would like to see a list of everything we've planted in this bed, just go to my blog and do a web search on the words pollinator garden. And at the bottom of that blog post, you will see a list of everything in a chart and it gives all of their attributes. Happy gardening.